right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Miami Market Sense Making. I'm Jake Fletcher with Remax Advanced Realty right here in beautiful Miami, Florida. And I'm really excited because the numbers are out from the Miami Association of Realtors for the month of August in 2019. So let's talk about it. I'm gonna do like my last video where I put the screenshots of the information on the screen so you guys can see it and pause it and screenshot it if you want to. And the big takeaways here are months of inventory has gone down for both townhomes and condos and single family homes. And the percentage of sales in cash has also go, gone down as well. There's some other things we're gonna talk about, but let's go ahead and jump into it. We'll start with single family homes. So closed sales went down 1.9%, uh, which is not a huge number. Um, you know, pretty, pretty normal market activity, I would say, you know, anything, under 2%, I'm not that worried about as far as number of sales. So closed sales down from uh, 1,186 to 1,164, a nominal amount, right? From August of 2018 to 2019. Now, here's where things are a little bit different. Now, the paid in cash closed sales in 2018, August was 265 in 2019 was 210. That's a drop of 20.8%. That is statistically significant. And due to uh, mainly to FERPTA, uh, which is regulations put by the government on foreign investors, regulating the amount of um, oversight that there is over foreign money coming in and buying real estate basically. And Miami being a very, uh, very large, portion of foreign bought real estate in the United States. So down 20.8%. For condos and townhomes, it only went down 15.7%, but still very statistically significant. It went from 642 paid in cash closed sales in August of 2018 to 541. So a drop of 101, right? So very, very statistically significant. Uh, now the condo closed sales has dropped 3.8% overall from 1,258 to 1,210. Okay, so a little bit more statistically significant there from August of last year to August of this year. Still nothing to really, you know, cry tears or, you know, write home about. You know, this is normal market activity. From year to year, you're going to see percentages shift and adjust. All right, that's just how the market acts. And in reality, while everybody is crying and complaining about, oh, the market might crash, blah, blah, blah. What we know in the business is that things can't just always go up, right? There's got to be equilibrium, okay? Otherwise, if there's things are just always going up, that's when you get a crash. So when you see things undulate back and forth, higher and lower, higher and lower, that's actually good. It tells us that this is normal market activity. Um, to put it concisely, there's obviously a lot of other factors that play into that, but the numbers tell us that the market activity is normal and it's healthy, okay? So it's a healthy market. So I'm not worried about less sales, uh, you know, when you're going from 1258 to 1210 or 1186 to 1164. It's not a crazy big deal. Now, what's interesting is for single family homes, the median sale price went up $10,000, 2.8%, from 360,000, to 370,000, okay? And, but the average sale price went down. So in August of last year, it was about 538,000. And this year it was 498,000, about 499,000 actually. So that was a decrease of 7.3%, which is very interesting. Um, the dollar volume also went down. I would say this is statistically significant and also in line with there being less sales. So it went down 9% in single family homes from 638 million to 580 million. That's a big drop, okay? And that what that tells you since there's a bigger percentage of dollar volume drop than the percentage of less closed sales is that the dollar amount is being made up for in those higher priced properties. So there's less high dollar properties being sold, okay? Now, let's continue on. The median percentage of original list price received, which is basically what the houses were listed for to what they sold for, stayed about the same. So pretty normal market activity, again, sitting around 96%, a little less. 
Uh, the median time to contract went from 40 days to 49 days. That's an increase of 22%, which sounds like a lot, but nine days is barely more than a week. Okay, and what that tells us is that people are being a little more cautious with what they're buying. And, you know, there's also still a lot of inventory on the market. And, you know, things are just taking a little bit longer to sell. But 49 days, really not that crazy. You know, you're, you're talking about, you know, not even two months. So uh, to go to contract. Mm -hmm. Median time to sale, though, that's going from uh, the house going on the market to the actual closing. We went from 89 days in single family homes, August of 2018, to 98, okay, 89 to 98. That's an increase of about 10%. And that is in line with that increase in the median time to contract. It takes a little longer to get to contract. It's gonna take a little longer to get to the closing table. Nothing crazy, right? Um, now, new pending sales is interesting. Less pending sales from 1398 to 1279, okay? So a little, a little less, uh, a little more than 100 uh, new pending sales. And new listings also went down from 1,900 to about 1,600, okay? So about 300 less. And that's about almost 17% decrease of new listings, which is in line with a decrease in new pending sales and a decrease in pending inventory and a decrease in active inventory. And all of that leads up to the decrease in months of supply. So months supply of inventory went from 6.1 months to 5.9, a decrease of 3.3%. Again, not really statistically significant, nothing that's shaking up the market and making things crazy, okay? So pretty interesting information there. Now, here's some more information about single family homes, traditional foreclosure REOs and short sales. Now, the foreclosures went down a staggering almost 35% from 72 last year to 47 this year, which is good. Less foreclosure starts is a good sign, a good economic sign. And the median sale price of those foreclosures also went down, very uh, went up, sorry, nominally from 271,000 to about 275,000. So pretty normal, pretty, pretty nominal. Now the traditional closed sales, uh, as we said, went, uh, it, it was about the same, for, uh, for August of 2018 to 2019, there was literally one more from 1,089 to 1,090. And the short sales went up from 25 to 27, which is an increase of 8%. So what that tells us is that, that uh, th basically that decrease from last year, August to this year, August, is being made up in the amount of short sales that are happening, right? There was about, 30 something, uh, a little less than 30 less closed, uh, I'm sorry, foreclosures and REOs than there was last year, okay? So that kind of makes up for that difference of closed sales altogether, the 1167 to 1136. So when we factor in that, okay, yeah, there was less closed sales, but what there was less of was foreclosures and REOs, which is a good thing. If less people are foreclosing, that's a good thing. Okay, um, now let's talk about a, uh, a little bit of information in the, uh, the townhomes and uh, condos. So townhomes and condos, what we're seeing is the number of closed sales actually also mirrored the single families. It went down a little bit from 1258 to 1210. Again, not really that statistically significant because what we're seeing less of is foreclosures and REOs. So again, a good thing, 21% uh, decrease to be precise. So paid in cash, as I said, also went down by 15%. The median sale price went up from 230 to 241,000. Average sale price went down as well. All of this was mirrored in the single families. Uh, you can rewind and check it. 397,000 to about 371,000 for our average sale price. Dollar volume also went down by about the same amount, 10% rather than 9%, from 490, about almost 500 million to 449 million. So 50 million less, which again shows us that those high dollar homes are what is not moving as quickly, in addition to there being less foreclosures. So not really that bad of news for people that aren't, 
you know, in the, the higher echelons of economic standing. Now, what's interesting here is we had a, a also a big drop of new listings for single family homes. It was a, almost 17% for condos. It was 12, almost 13%. So less new listings for condos, but not as drastic of a decrease as it was for single family homes. And that's pretty much everything that's statistically significant. Again, I'm putting this on the screen here so you guys can screenshot it and check it out for yourself. But that's a quick little look at what happened in August of 2019 versus August of 2018. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. And let me know what you'd like to see on the next video. Again, follow my Insta Slam, and I will catch you guys next time. Fletcher Group, sell smart, buy bold. See you on the next one. Yeah.